Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a continuation from last tutorial in which we were talking about this hexagon animation. So here, so here we're in Blender and this is basically where we left off last time from the tutorial. And if you look generally about this, this these aren't many nodes and uh, there are many, despite the noodles that we have, which looks very chaotic, you can definitely organize them better and if you follow the last tutorial step by step and uh, carefully enough, I think it shouldn't be a very huge deal to really understand what you're trying to do and whatever. So really try to understand the node tree so that you do not make any mistakes. Generally, I think it should be fine. There are several changes I've made. Most of them are parametric changes, like I changed some values here and there, changed some seed here and there. But the one biggest uh, changes I've made is previously I used this time info node and, and the map range to actually reverse this entire animation. But if you play the animation, there is a huge gap that you do not have anything. And then you start to have animation and immediately just uh, repeats the time frame. I don't like this. I found this is dumb. So I changed, so I firstly changed this into a preset of random delay time. And this animation runs positive. You have an animation, you wait a little bit, and then you have this break up. Okay. And this overall delay is determining the time that you do not have any animation. Okay. But there comes to a question that how do I reverse this animation? I don't want to use Premiere Pro or other system just to re reverse this stupid rendering. How should I do? Uh, what should I do? Uh, it's very simple. Just uh, take a float math and use the subtract because our random delete time is increasing the values. So you just subtract this increasing value, you get the reverse decreasing value. So I think the 100 is about kind of right number, or you can decrease it a little bit further, like 85 or 90. This is, you can tweak by yourself, depends on the old values, all of the place, like the durations, whatever, whatever. So once you have done all this, everything is okay right now. The today's topic, today's actual topic is talking about how to deal with the UV. So previously I've already added the materials. In the meantime, uh, it's it's a very simple material. You have texture coordinates, mappings, image texture, principal BSDF, nothing special. But if you look at the material preview, it's just a blue, horrible, nothing. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of thickness with the solidify so that it looks kind of a little bit nicer with the kind of shadings, but it just looks ugly and horrible. So the original texture looks like this. So it's not a pure blue, obviously you have white and apple sign and some character, which looks very nice. So you might think, okay, why do I need UV? Just use generated. But if you start to try to play the animations, then you realize the texture is actually not adhered to the points. And if you play the animation, then the texture actually flies around. For example, this hexagon already has a kind of a Y on the top of that. But this has this Y later moves into whatever, whatever other stuff. So it just sort of looks out bizarre. If you really look at this animation carefully, you find a lot of flaws in that. And this is not what you want and how you gonna to deal with that. So this is the case that you really need a UV, but as we previously see, the UV is completely blue because this object does not have a UV at all. If you go to the UV editing, it's just there's just nothing. So how can we get the UV in this case? And this is the reason why I need animation nodes instead of geometry nodes, because this task is kind of very specific. Uh, to make the to, to make a UV is pretty simple. So I'm going to shift the D to duplicate this mesh, and then I'm going to go to the top views, go into edit mode and hit use, and project from view with bounds. The immediately it gives me a UV that fits all this kind of bounds, which is perfect. Amazing. This is amazing. 
but this has nothing to do with our animation at this moment. Like you play this animation, it does not have an animation because it's not controlled by our animation nodes. But the one controlled by animation nodes still does not have a UV. So in this case, what we essentially want to like to do is to transfer UV from this non non uh, non animation nodes related geometry to animation nodes related geometry. To do that, it's pretty simple. We have insert UV map and we have get UV map. So get UV map needs from the ghost from the mesh. So we take the object the mesh down. Uh, if I put the mesh, so I need the name of this UV attribute. So UV, UV, UV. The UV attribute is usually being just called uh, UV and map. UV and AB. And I put the position into place. And it still says the mesh does not have a UV map. Let's just select the mesh first. So what's wrong with our setup? The, what, the thing that you need to do is to hit use, go to the socket settings, load the UV, and load the UV. So now everything has been transferred. And if you play this animation, you can always see this kind of apple is a stick to this particular hexagonal grid. It does not move away. This is step. Uh, this is method is not 100% procedural because if you try to change any kind of values, 30, 50, then you are breaking up the UV. You have to repeat the process all over again. But I think it's kind of things that you just have to get used to. And it's really not that difficult step. It's just uh, several click, 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 and a click. So I think this is it. There is an additional topic I would like to discuss. Is that, um, so, so far our animation is still kind of simple. That you firstly move on either X or Y, and then you move on either X or Y, and then you move down. So this is a three-step animation. And we can play, and we can see this animation is pretty short, it's kind of simple, maybe you want more complex, whatever. But uh, what if you want this more complex? How should we do? So previously, the reason, uh, the way we actually make this animation more complex is to basically duplicate this switch, duplicate the two combined vector, duplicate these times, duplicate animator float, duplicate the minimum maximum loop, duplicate index C and so on. You may think we need to do the same if we need to do the four, three and fourth step. Actually, this is not true because we can essentially treat this a simple loop node as a group node. Okay, so what it means is that you just take a single offset matrix and you take our loop and you can take the boolean or you can run generate a new boolean, it does not really matter. And you directly plug this vector list into vector list. Here is only one issue is that we need something in this time list. So the time list, as I mentioned before, the time is basically um, for this animator float. And the, our second animation must occur after the first animation. So we need the time from the first animation. Within this output, we can take a float list because time is a float number. And we need the output the time from our second animated float. And uh, notice that the first animated float has time output to the second animated float. So once we output this, we just take this float list to the time list. Changing the seed so that everything's procedural. So you can see the steps of animation has been increased. So it contains more movement. Um, you can definitely repeat these steps. So take another offset matrices, take another loop nodes, take the same boolean, take the time lists, take the vector list, changing the seeds and repeating the process. So the animation will become more and more complex as you're doing these steps. 
but basically this is kind of idea uh, this actually also means I do not need to duplicate this switch node at the first place I can just duplicate I can just make it as a group nodes and just duplicate 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 throughout so it's this way it saves amount of nodes that you need and it makes the node tree looks better so this is really all about it so I hope you enjoy this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time bye bye